Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Great Black Debates. I am your host, John F. Thomas, and I have with me here my guests, Deva Emanuel and Mark Muhammad Jr. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Yeah, good. So uh, just to let everybody know, um, we th basically what this is about, this is welcome to Great Black Debates, and this is a mixture between a TED Talk and a battle rap. The TED Talk part is we are having an intelligent conversation with intelligent black people like these two gentlemen here, and the battle rap part is because it's still a competition. So we need you all to chime in and vote. So when you do that, go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, that's vote dot great black debates dot com on who you think should win in this great debate battle all right so uh we, we reached out to people who wanted to debate issues that are important to black people black people needs to have their own conversations about their own issues uh, so tonight we have our special guests again i introduce them again i have mr uh devon manual and uh, i'll just start off uh, with him devon manual is uh actually he owns israel construction so he is the owner of that and he also is uh, currently staying in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Israel Construction Company is starting in 2014. He is the president uh, pro temp of New Jerusalem, uh, New Jerusalem, that is who and who is arguably most wisest and most influ influential Israelites to date. Um, let me see. He is a carpenter by trade and he was formally educated in public schools, including Fayetteville State University. Uh, so if you want to check this guy out, go to his YouTube channel, Claim Your Inheritance. It focuses on informing the Israelites worldwide about their family's inheritance that is currently in a trust and the perfect strategy for them to claim these funds. Um, Devi, was there anything else that you wanted to add to that for what I mentioned or anywhere else that people can follow you? Yeah, um, if if you think I'm doing a good job tonight and I, I uh, lay out a plan, that you think you want to be a part of and promote, then uh, just hit up, hit your email into my email, which is konuju, that's C-O-N-U-J-U, at G 2019, at Gmail. Okay, and if anybody's listening, uh, please write that down for you know others to see if they wanna reach out to this brother here. And also, uh, everyone that's tuning in, just make sure you hit the thumbs up button, hit the likes button, hit all the likes, so that way this can you know get out there that helps us. And also uh, for everyone else to see and to tune in to see what's going on. So I'm going to introduce Brother Mark Muhammad Jr. Uh, he was uh, born in Germany, which is is, is pretty amazing, international. Uh, so he was raised in Massachusetts, but he currently resides in Louisville, Kentucky. He is a member of the Nation of Islam. Since 2013, he's self-employed. He is an insurance broker and he's a barber. So he is just on the grind. He's doing his thing. Um, actually, he's a pes uh, pescatarian. He's been doing that for six and a half years. So definitely kudos, brother, for you know having definitely a clean body and, and eating well, eating right. Um, he's building this platform on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And uh, what he's been doing lately, he's been helping stop murders. Uh, debating doctors on vaccines and the digestive syst uh, system of the body uh, so far as what causes the body to get sick and what heals the body. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add to that, Mark? Uh, yes, sir. Real quick, if, if anybody would like to reach me or, or check out some of my, uh, my work, you can just reach me on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Mark Muhammad Jr. Or brother Mark Muhammad, um, either or, I'll, I'll come up either way, and uh, that's that's just about it. All right, cool, cool. So you've now I've been introduced to Deva and Mark. So I'm going to get more into what's going on. So our topic for the evening is: Will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And so um, that's going to be the topic of the evening. And there's been a lot of debate on that, or a lot of talking on that since uh, it's been brought back up to the, the forefront lately. And we'll dig more into that a little bit later, but I just wanna go ahead and flesh out the rest of how uh, this great debate is gonna work. So uh, at the end of the show, after these two uh, go, go at it on the topic in hand, uh, at the end of the show, the audience gets to vote. And so uh, you are voting on who makes the best argument on this topic. So the, the way this goes, is it goes like this. This is how it's going to go down. We believe people should be able to go hard and make their points, but be able to be friends afterwards. And that's what we're aiming for, to have intelligent conversation, but we can still be cool. We can still be friends, still you know, go out to eat, shake hands, hug, and do all of that and, and do business together. So there are four rounds. In the first two rounds, 
each person is going to get two minutes per round and they're going to make to, to make their point. I'm going to raise my hand when it gets 10 seconds into the end of your round. And once I raise my hand, that lets you know you have 10 seconds left. So during that time, make sure that you go ahead and finish off your argument. If you continue on after that 10 seconds, I'm going to have to mute you, unfortunately. Those, those are just the rules. And I know certain people are like, oh, don't mute them, but just these are the rules. I'm sorry. That's what we have to follow. Um, so that's going to happen in the first two rounds. The third and the fourth round, you're going to have three minutes for the last two rounds. And the same thing happens at the last 10 seconds. I'm going to raise my hand. Just make sure that you're paying attention and just go ahead and finish off your argument. Um, other than that, the you can go and vote for the winners at, uh, like I mentioned before, vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, that's vote.greatblackdebates.com to vote for who you think did best. So if you think Divide did the best, go there, vote for him. If you think Mark killed it, go and vote for Mark. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and flip the coin. And uh, what do you guys choose? Uh, heads, tails, whoever calls it first. Heads. Heads. All right. The boss says heads. I'm flipping it. Heads wins. So, Devon, do you want to go first or do you want to go second? It's up to I'm you. Going first. You said you're going first? Yeah. All right. So, again, the topic is, will Black people ever receive adequate reparations? So, uh, Devon, your time starts now. Yes, we will receive adequate reparations. That's obvious. Ta-Nehisi Coates stated, until we reckon with the compounding moral debts of our ancestors, America will never be whole. Before I took up the cause of national reparations, I was solely focused on my people who are repentant Israelites in the diaspora. Our focus for national monies is uh, drastically different than the normal population. The redress waiting for repentant Israelites is our physical inheritance uh, that comes from our family ancestors that trumps the world's GDP combined. Our inheritance is being hoarded by the Pope and other banksters who are now morally and financially bankrupt in a civil law status. As we know, bankruptcy has its own remedies, so everything will continue as uh, they have always have uh, with the satanic discrimination of Black people in America without a very focused effort by Black people. So my position on the topic of will black people ever receive adequate reparations is an emphatic yes. Once black people take the issue very seriously as if the existence of their descendants depended on it. The issue is not nearly as scary as they imagine. White nationalists will not genocide black people. KFC stock will not skyrocket. Watermelons will not go extinct. White nationalists will be neutralized quickly by the National Guard. Black people will begin to create their own restaurant franchises and grow their own watermelons. I'm looking forward to sharing uh, with the family several ways to receive reparations now and the steps Club of New Jerusalem are taking to claim our family's inheritance or physical wealth in order to improve the quality of life for all right, sorry, uh, if I had to go ahead and uh, cut you off there, but um, it was it was really good. So uh, Devi is basically saying, if every, for everyone's now checking in, uh, welcome to Great Black Debates. We are talking about will black people ever receive adequate reparations, and uh, that was the vow manual that you just heard. So just to recap what he was saying, basically he was saying yes, an emphatic yes, uh, we will receive adequate reparations, and he's saying our basically our inheritance trumps the world's GDP. And he was saying that once black people take the issue very seriously, we can most definitely receive our reparations and we will start building our businesses again. We'll start opening our shops. We'll, we'll just be doing so many wonderful and amazing things um, once we receive those reparations. So that was the uh point. Uh, so I'm going to head on over to Mark Emmanuel Jr. Uh, Mark. What are your thoughts on what Devi was saying and in regards to will Black people ever receive adequate reparations? You have two minutes and your time starts now. Just remember to make sure to look at me when I raise my hand so that way you know you have your 10 seconds left. Um, well, just look up every once in a while if you if you happen to look up. Um, so your time starts now, uh, Mark. Well, yes, sir. I'm, I'm in agreement as far as with the response, yes. 
Um, but as far as the method to achieve in that, that's still a question to me. If you look at the history of, of America, whenever America has paid out uh, reparations, which is its latest, it's gave Japan um, over $1.2 billion, which is $20,000 per, per resident there, has paid Israel four to $6 billion every, dating back every single year up until 1946. 2017 paid Israel another $38 billion, has paid reparations towards all of the uh, uh, the native Indians in America, specifically the the, the native Cadians, uh, Canada's uh, Owatas and Standing Rock tribe as well. But the main thing that they all had in common was unity, which in other words, they had a certain kind of nation. So it takes three things to establish a nation with really with any nation. You have to have your own constitution, your own flag, and you know, your own army. So whenever we unite together and take it serious, as brother was saying, and establish our own uh, nation, our own separate state or territory, then the reparations will be paid out. Up until that time, it's really just more of a uh, topic of a conversation uh, rather than some actions waiting to happen. All that right. Oh, this is easy. So, all right, cool. 30 seconds to spare. <laughs> all right, bro. All right, so uh, you heard brother Mark Muhammad Jr. Uh, basically lay it all out on the line. If everyone's just now tuning in, you uh, just listen to Mark. We uh, are talking about will black people ever receive adequate reparations? Um, so, so far, if you if you like what you listen to, if you have an idea who you think is still early in the game, but if you, if you feel like you know who's going to win so far, go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, this vote.greatblackdebates.com. And if you're liking what you're seeing, go to greatblackdebates.com to submit yourself or somebody that you know who would be a, a good addition to the show to come on and, and have a great debate for everyone to tune in and listen to. So again, our topic is, will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And it um, seems like both of, the, both of these uh, intelligent brothers are saying, yes, we will receive them. Uh, and they seem to be on the same page as far as we just need to come together to, to get it done. Like it can be done, but there's a few steps that have to be taken uh, is what I'm gathering from everything that they're saying. But uh, I also wanted to introduce a, a question for the both of you. Well, not a question, maybe just I'm going to in, introduce a topic. So uh, presidential hopeful uh, Marianne Williamson, uh, she's uh, planning on running for president or maybe she's already a candidate for president. I'm not entirely sure just yet, but I know she's interested in running. But she says black people need rep uh, reparations around 200 billion. Um, so a lot of people say it's a lot more than that, uh, even in the trillions. So what do you think uh, are her chances of accomplishing that? Uh, so I'll pass it back over to Deva. And what are your thoughts on that? And you know, what, what are her chances of even accomplishing that? Uh, your time starts and now you have two minutes. Well, she will uh, definitely fail. If you've ever seen a, uh, a Greyhound race, right? They, they dangle a carrot around a track that they can never reach. You understand? So... That, that, that the purpose of her being in place there is strictly to divide your vote. So your energies are being wasted in their voting system anyway. So you need to be taking your energies and producing your own everything. And I'm going to get into that. Oh, you, you can keep going. This, you, or did, or did oh, you want to? Oh, do I have two minutes for, are we going starting the second round or something? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. You're starting the starting the second round. So uh, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll just uh, since I I didn't mention that that we starting the second round. That's on me. So uh, I'll just go ahead and and start start your uh, two minutes back up. So starting now, that that was included with the so starting the second round. Let's <laughs> go ahead. The only way America will enter into a new era of greatness is by redressing Black people, both from Africa as slaves and the Black Indigenous population. We cannot expect any famous puppet to hold our hands like babies crossing the street. We can no longer wait. The talk I'm giving now is very affordable, free, cheap. The only way for black people to receive reparations is to become active with people who know the proper steps to take and assist them. It's not as simple as what Johnny Cochran failed to finish before his untimely assassination via a lawsuit. America is notorious for their unfair treatment in courts in every country, every county in the country. So why would you, anyone expect to uh, make headway in that area? 
there are exceptions to every rule, of course, uh, by receiving minor victories over the years that only resulted in the black victor over the courts drained and still defeated mentally and at times financially. The other two exceptions is in the matter of reparations who come to mind are the two African women who never met and were unaware of one another independently and successfully sued the United States for reparations to the tune of 10 million to f and 25 million respectively based on the UN declaration of international law that slavery is a crime against humanity. A crime against humanity is retroactive, meaning liable from its inception and not protected by law. The way any one of you can do the same is by showing the court only one slave in your ancestry and attaching a value to that, their lifespan. That's one way to collect adequate reparations on an individual basis. All right, thank you, brother, thank you. Uh, so that was Devai, uh, he was uh, basically, we're, we're talking about um, the topic will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And uh, we're into the second round. And uh, like I said, there was the vibe manual that you just heard. Uh, he was basically saying uh, in regards to, cause I introduced uh, presidential hope for Marianne Williamson. Cause she said that black people uh, need reparations around 200 billion. But, uh, and I was asking him what, what, what does he think about her chances on that as well? And he was basically saying she'll fail. She'll definitely fail. Uh, she's there in place only to divide the vote and our energy is being wasted in the voting system. Uh, we can't expect, uh, <laughs> that was a, it was a good, a good line, we can't expect a famous puppet to hold our hand across the street. Uh, we need to become active with people who know uh, how to basically do this, receive reparations. And you also mentioned the two, two women sued the U.S. for two million to five million. Is that, is that right? Ten million and twenty-five million. And oh, sorry, I, I was completely wrong on it. Ten million. And 25 million. Okay. All right. yeah. I, I, I don't know what I, what I heard. Uh, so and. Uh, and basically with that, all you have to do is just uh, just show to the court uh, one slave. Is that right? Did I hear Absolutely. that right? Absolutely. And it's in your family, in your in your line, your family line. So uh, that's, that's really interesting. So, Mark, um, what are, are your thoughts on that uh, going into round two? Uh, well, we're already in round two, but uh, we're going into your part of uh, round two. So you have two minutes to make your rebuttal. Uh, make sure you all go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, it's vote.greatblackdebates.com. And uh, Mark, I'm going to start your time. Uh, what are your thoughts on all of that? Yes, sir. As far as um, with our sister uh, stating that with the $200 billion, I, I believe that is far below the reparations amount that, that should be given, um, if there's some given at all. According to uh, Professor... Um, Dennis Rancor, the former professor at the University of Ottawa, he did a small calculation and he stated that the, uh, the, the descendants of slaves should be offered $59 trillion, which is equivalent to $1.5 million per slave, uh, approximately 40 million slaves. So as far as with that statement and, it, and attempting trying to get at least $200 billion, that's really not even enough to tickle our feet and make us jump out of the chair. Now with her run, for for president, um, it's the same story over and over again. Um, the previous forty five presidents haven't done anything for black pe uh, black people. Our first black president, Barack Obama, did nothing for blacks. Did everything for every other ethnic group, every sexuality, every continent and country, except for the black people here in America who needed it the most. So. With that being said, of course, it's just going to be singing the same old song. The best thing to do is what I said in the previous round is to unite and establish a separate territory of our own. Therefore, we won't even have to be asking none of these questions that we have right now. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, so if everyone's just tuning in, uh, welcome to Great, Great Black Debates. And our topic at hand is will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And I also uh, recently asked, because we just ended the second round, uh, about presidential hopeful Marianne Williamson, who says that Black people should uh, should get reparations around $200 billion, which is, is, is nice. It's nice of her. But uh, as uh, Mark just mentioned, he was like, that's uh, far below the amount that we should be given. And he also mentioned that uh, President Barack Obama and the previous presidents really did nothing for Black people. Like They did things for everyone else, for 
almost every other uh, race and creed and wh whatever, but nothing really was done for, for black people. Um, and we need to depend on one another and build our own, create our own territory. So that way we can become strong enough to make these demands and be heard uh, in a proper way. Um, so going into round three, uh, I'm gonna pass it back over uh, to Devah. So Devah, uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on it? And also everyone who is, uh, sorry, if I, one, one second, if everyone is tuning in, just make sure you go to vote.greatblackdebates.com, vote.greatblackdebates.com. Also chime in with your thoughts on the uh, situation at hand. Do you agree? Do you disagree or, or what? I, I don't know. Let, let's hear what you have to say. Uh, so Devon, just uh, going off of what uh, Mark was saying about the presidents, they, they've done nothing. The presidents uh, previous, even President Barack Obama, which everyone was so in love with and and you know he, he could sing and he was singing Al Green and, and all of this thing, which is you know this the cool factor. The cool factor was through the roof, but like now we have uh, like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and all these other trying to have like a basically a, almost a, a carbon copy or a poor copy of Barack Obama. I mean, would would it even matter with uh, the reparations and, and things, or should we just keep focusing on on self? And you have three minutes, uh, so starting now, uh, Deva, go ahead. Well, they've done a whole lot. Okay, so this is why uh, America is, is like on top, because they abuse their population, a, a particular uh, part of their population, which uh, tends to be melanated people. Okay, so there's been lots of people that have been neglected all this time, and they need to uh, redress that. So earlier, I offered the family a proven, successful, easily attainable remedy on an individual basis. Now I'll go into a national redress and remedy for black people. The first step is for the people to focus on this aim simultaneously on every platform in order to promote and be louder than entertainment, which is the most powerful psych psychological weapon the uh, debtors use to distract each of you from this simple goal of national reparations. Instead of serving yourself in the case of national reparations, each of you must help promote the cause or learn the steps it takes to achieve the simple goal. The second step after promoting simultaneously is to notify the culprits of slavery of their debt. This does a number of things. It, it makes the debtors aware that many people are aware of how to collect this debt and makes them presume that the effort will be successful, which will cause the debtors to either pay reparations after due process, which is three months or 90 days, or reject the offer to pay us. The culprit's awareness of your awareness to utilize this method of notification is a very powerful motivator for each debtor. The courts are in place for one reason. That's to prevent physical violence between a debtor and a debt collector. A summary judgment is insurable and partially recoupable in the unfortunate event a debtor refuses to pay. Due process escalates any means you choose to use in the event a debtor refuses to pay. The threat of a lawsuit by millions of people simultaneously called a class action lawsuit is very frightening to the culprits of slavery. And this is the sole reason their psychological army via their produced entertainment including entertainment with black faces, stays very active by pumping this entertainment into your minds to both steal your time from fighting for reparations and making you feel the cause of reparations must be impossible. It's all an illusion of power uh, that they do not possess. What you're wit witnessing in entertainment is the green devil on a projector with fire and amplified sound blasting to produce fear. All entertainment produces this effect in its very sleek viewers. Sorry, brother, uh, Devon, sorry to cut you out. It was, it was getting, getting real good what you were, you were saying, uh, especially uh, digging into entertainment. So, but, but for everyone that's, uh, that's tuning in, uh, that was uh, Devon Manuel. He uh, is basically saying that this, his, historically, they uh, abuse their population, which are the melanated people um, here, even all around the world, they're just being abused. And what we need to do to remedy this, we need to focus uh, on 
uh, this for every platform, uh, help promote the cause to achieve the goal and to notify the corporates of slavery for their debts. So that way, once that they know that we know that we expect them to pay us, we are getting that much closer to accomplishing our goal of getting our reparations. Um, and also that the courts are there to assist us with this process. And that many are also walked into the entertainment industry, which is ultimately being a distraction for us to actually achieve this goal because we're constantly being bombarded with this, being bombarded with that, um, desperate desperate housewives and, and uh, Housewives of Atlanta and all these other shows that, that we're watching and, and we're, we're just so bogged down and dumbed down that we're not gathering together and we're I, I'm bickering with each other, even seeing visuals of us bickering with each other. And th this is me adding on stuff to what he was <laughs> saying, but um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just helping feed into us what they expect us to be, you know, just uh, fighting with each other, never, never getting along. And ultimately we're distracted from asking what's rightfully ours and demanding what's rightfully ours. Um, so Mark, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on what Devai was saying uh, in regards to all of that? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And um, also before we, everyone that's tuning in, go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, it's vote.greatblackdebates.com. If you want to be a part of this, like Devai and like Mark is, how they're debating on here, and you feel like you have a voice that you can, that definitely needs to be amplified and heard, uh, go to greatblackdebates.com, go to greatblackdebates.com. That way you can submit yourself for somebody that you know that will be a great addition to the show. Uh, so Mark, uh, again, with what Devai was saying, uh, what do you think and do you agree, do you disagree? And your time starts now, you have three minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, I had a quick question, actually, as far as mm -hmm. the, he was breaking up. Oh, sorry. I, I couldn't really hear. Um, was he saying what was the topic about? It was something about the presidents. I did, that's all I, all I knew. Oh, for Devon? You said he was breaking up? No, as far as the response, my response is just to the. Um, oh, just, uh, just to, 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 to what, to what he was saying overall. I mean, if you, if you want to speak on what I was saying about uh, the president, there was just something I just threw in that, you know, just about. They, yes, sir, I just have, haven't really helped at all. If you want to, if you want to talk about that, you can. If you just want to directly address what uh, Devon was saying, there wasn't there wasn't a question that really needed to be answered. It was just something I just I just mentioned. Okay. So this okay. is completely up to you, and uh, and your time starts now. So you're good. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. So um, most definitely, all presidents from the beginning up until this time, um, as far as dealing with, um, as, as Brother Devon was saying, that that our it's dealing with the population of the people. Um, of course, you know, blacks outnumber whites 11 to one um, ever since 1930 or previous to that, but uh, that's, that's when that, um, that, that uh, number was given. So of course, let's just date back, Jim Crow in the 1950s and 60s. Shortly after that, yeah, President Reagan pushed the crack academics in the 80s. After that, you had the, prime, uh, the crime bill pushed out with, with Bill Clinton. Up in the early 2000s, George Bush uh, attacks those seven Muslim countries in Africa and blames it on the Muslims in America or, or over there in Africa and started a war. Then you have President Obama come after that who passed all the gay laws. Now you have Trump in office doing every single thing except the thing that needs to be done in order to save America. Last time I checked, America was in $20 trillion in debt due to the, um, the lackadaisical approach and ignoring the cry of black people's pain, suffering and death in America. Um, a lot of things that's going on right now is uh, horrible leadership. Of course, some of it is our fault for not taking heed to the knowledge and the wisdom that has been given to us by, by a lot of our leaders here in America, a lot of our black leaders. Um, and on top of that, um, with the presidents, as, as brother was saying, I'm trying to re remember, as brother was saying, it's all about population control. You keep you sick, you keep yourself dumb, you keep yourself blind to the light. They'll always have control over you and have strong influence through your music, through the medical system, through the educational system, and so forth and so forth. And they will, they will remain on top until, you know, until we wake up. So that's just what I believe some of the main uh, things is going on with, with America regarding their presidents and regarding us as a people as well. 
All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. So for everyone that's, uh, that's just now tuning in, uh, welcome to greatblackdebates.com. You're, uh, just, you just heard Mark, uh, Mark Muhammad Jr. And he was uh, speaking on will uh, Black people ever receive our reparations and also uh, receive adequate reparations. Sorry. And uh, he, he was touching on basically all the precedents uh, that we've had thus far. They deal with uh, the population of the people and, and, and going through all the presidencies, President Reagan pushed a crack epidemic, uh, Clinton push, pushed a crime bill, Obama passed gay laws, and President Trump is dealing with everybody except for, except for us, really, and, um, or basically everyone who, uh, who is white, <laughs> is what I've been seeing so far. Um, and America is, is $22 trillion in debt, but no one has uh, found out about that yet. They've been talking about that. I, I listened to that on NPR actually today, and and that's just that's ridiculous. Um, and basically, he also said that it's uh, all about population control. They they are trying to control us through our music, trying to control us through the medical system, trying to control us through the educational system. And until we really wake up and fight against this, we're not going to receive the reparations or fully have the control that we need in order to push forward. Is what Mark Muhammad was uh, Mark Muhammad Jr. was saying. And also for everyone who's, who's tuning in, also chime in with your thoughts on this, on what they're saying. Uh, also vote for who you think is, um, is, is really killing it so far, who's doing such, such a great job. And also the, uh, let's just give a, a, a digital clap for these brothers so far. We have one more round left, round four is coming up. So digital clap for all these brothers here and hit the like button and, and just make sure you're sharing this so everybody can see this is what Intelligent Conversation is about when we're talking about these things for the black community and, and how can we, how can we Get, get around this, how can we get out of this and improve past this? Uh, so going into the, the fourth round, still have three minutes and I'll, uh, I'll mention this uh, idea as well. Uh, I just happened to see this uh, today as I was uh, browsing online. Um, there was a store, I, I forgot where exactly it was at, but this uh, owner ended up closing down his his store. Well, not closing down his store, he, he, he took out all the Nike products because Colin Kaepernick uh, got the deal with Nike and Nike, you know, team with them. And you know how, uh, I guess, uh, a, a good portion of the, the the white population feels about Colin Kaepernick taking a knee uh, for all of the brothers and sisters being killed in the streets, uh, police brutality and things like that. And and how they, they feel as though he's disrespecting the flag. Uh, but what the interesting thing about this story is once the guy took the Nike item items out of his uh, store, a year later, he had to close the store. And he's now admitting that, well, I guess more people, he has more supporters than, than I thought. And it's, it's things like this to where it's, it's, a very, it's a very simple idea to where we just want justice. We want equality. We need these simple things, but you have people like that who don't even want to hear that, who don't even want to acknowledge that, who want to make it into something else. And it's not about disrespecting the flag. It's not about any of these other things or or even the hands up, don't shoot her. Or you just keep going back, even when, uh, they, they don't talk about it a lot, but when Dr. Martin Luther King was walking in the streets, they were calling him all kinds of names. It wasn't all lovey-dovey as they try to make it now, as history will make it seem like, oh, he, he was a great leader, people loved him. And they, they didn't love him, black people loved him, but not white people did not love him, not a lot, uh, most of them, they did not love him. So if, when, when, I, when I was, when I mentioned uh, the, presidential uh, hopeful uh, Marianne Williamson. Uh, she did mention that uh, that white people do, in order for reparations, and her, her idea is for reparations to get there, we have to really heal past racism and white people need to own up and apologize and really see that, stop looking at the effects, but look at the cause. And I, I kind of agree, it was just like, well, I mean, we, we're not gonna, they're not gonna agree to it if they, are constantly fighting us on the simplest of things, which is which is racism, which is I was standing here with nothing, no weapons, and you shot me down regardless. Things like that. We're not gonna get we're not gonna have them agree with reparations uh for for anything. That's that's just a lost cause. Just like you were saying, Devo. It's like you think she was just gonna fail with that. I just wanna know, uh, know your thoughts, your thoughts on that. Um like what what do you what do you think about that, Devo? Uh, at three minutes, well, it, fourth round starting now. Uh -huh. As far as um, the uh, racism aspect, that uh, there's been many um, social social experiments 
uh, proving that uh, people are racist uh, is, is, is completely obvious. So the final method of reparations uh, I'll share with the family is self-reparation. This is loosely defined as producing your own everything for the purpose of competing on an international uh, level and hoping for education. Our education and historical sh shared experiences will produce higher quality products and services. Black people are famous for innovation and ergonomics. This method, like the personal redress uh, and national confrontation redress in rounds one and two that I summarized before, uh, cannot fail when a number of focused people follow instructions. The steps are simple. First step is always the simultaneous pr promotion of uh, hashtag separate but greater. Reverting back to before the failed policy of integration that decimated the resources, innovation, and motivation to produce our own everything will cause a sustainable, manageable, economic boom for the black community that will be met with Hitler-like responses from the culprits of slavery that you must not fear, you must strategically combat and perform in a communal manner with respect for each other and in unison with each other. When Gucci and Prada and schools and students enraged you with mockery, allow that anger to be used as fuel to move under knowledgeable people who love you, think you're geniuses in your own right, and want to see you win with our guidance. We'll step out front like a lightning rod and attract the attention of the debtors away from each of you while you follow our instructions to successfully create your own everything. The only thing in your way is you. So let me explain this. Reinvoking the Gucci mockery, thousands of black designers have been exposed who were once invisible. Instead of your anger being wasted on frivolous marching exercises, each of you expose black designers and clothing companies to patronize. This is the proper use of anger, diverting monies to yourselves. However, these thousands of black designers and clothing companies are not under one umbrella in order to make a meaningful economic boom for the black community. So in other words, the millions of uh, innovators and producers in the black community do not mentally exist in the same space and time. An independent innovator. Uh, sorry, sorry about that, Deva. Uh, so um, yeah, all right, that was Deva Emanuel who was just basically talking about how we can um, basically fight against uh, everything that's basically being put up against us, especially with uh, Gucci and Prada. So uh, let me just recap on what, and, and for everybody that is just tuning in now, the topic that we are going over is, will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And basically what Deval was saying, this is round four. Um, he basically saying many uh, social experiments has, has, has proven uh, racism exists, but um, he also wanted to go more so into saying that black people are very, very famous for for innovation and being inventive and creative. And um, we we need to go on the simultaneous promotion of separate but greater. And he was also noting that uh, integration um, back during the civil rights area has um, decimated motivation and innovation within the black community. And instead of uh, using our anger against Gucci and Prada, uh, let's just use that energy to unite under uh, black leaders to uh, just be more more unified and 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 more together and and also try to expose more black designers to promote them instead of lashing out against uh, companies like Gucci who are putting out products that demean us and and really promote those negatives uh, that they try to put out there uh, exaggerated you know uh, blackened faces and, and you know, all the stuff that they, they, the white people try to act like they don't like, but you know, whatever. Yeah, there's a whole history of that. <laughs> but then, you know, they, they go get uh, tans and all of that stuff. But uh, so, Mark, I'm going to pass it on over to you. Uh, three minutes uh, for you as well. So, what do you have to say about what uh, Deva was saying? 
And everyone that's uh, tuning in, remember, go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, that's vote.greatblackdebates.com. Uh, so, Mark, three minutes. It starts now. Yes, sir. Uh, just dealing with from the uh, with, from the racism standpoint, as far as uh, what sister was saying that white people should apologize and mm -hmm. go back, um, and they, they should look more at the cause of things instead of the effect. My my response to that is that they are they've already looked at the cause of things. They was there created. Every single thing that they've been doing for the past four hundred plus years was all by design. They were civilized. They had they had land, well stolen land. Uh, you know, they knew how to live, they knew how to cook, clean everything, even though they made us do all those things. So there's no excuses for 400 straight years of straight slavery, suffering and death. Then they have the audacity to take it from a physical slavery to enslave you in the education, enslave you inside the medical institution, enslave you inside the prison, and straight enslave you inside uh, a twisted form of religion. And then on top of that, enslave you inside the thug life, the crack life, and the music life. So as far as them, I have to disagree with sister on that statement is that they should look more at the cause of things. They know exactly what they was doing. Most people don't know is that when you trace Hillary Clinton's uh, lineage back, she comes straight from the Rothschilds family, a straight descendant. So they, they know what they're doing. They just pass it on as generations or fathers or, or, or families should pass missions and information on just like how we should. That's exactly how they cut us off when we lost our roots. But as far as dealing with the um, um, more of the, the, the population with, with ourselves, brother is correct. Instead of taking our anger out on Gucci and Prada, we should really just be using that energy and directing it towards either ourselves or really directed towards one of our, or someone who's already in the business like that. So whenever the enemy or white people or anybody who does a racist, racist, uh, racist remark, it reminds me of what my, my Angelo said. He said, when people show you who they truly are, believe them. Mm -hmm. We've been telling you over and over and over again that white people, that their nature is a certain kind of nature and they act like that accordingly. It's like breathing to them. Racism lives in their blood. Their way of life is off track from our way. Their way of thinking, their way of doing things. Look at every single thing that, that, that's produced from white people, but the person is black. Look how that person is. We always joke on him in the hood. <laughs> you know, he, he, he always acts different, thinks different, and just on basic things. So it just shows that black people and white people can look at the same idea, the same situation and have two completely different outcomes. So as far as with us, our unity, that's always a plus. We have to do that. And as far as our aim and direction, now is our time once again to support our own people. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So you just listened to Mark Muhammad uh, Jr. Mark Muhammad Jr. And we're talking about will black people ever receive adequate reparations? And basically what he was saying is that um, White people have already uh, looked at the cause of what I asked earlier about uh, Marianna Williamson, uh, the saying that white people should apologize, uh, like genuinely apologize to the black community. And he was saying they, they already looked at the cause. They, they know what they're doing. So it's, it's, it's not really a surprise. They don't care, <laughs> basically. Long story short, it's a, he said it's all by design. They, they knew what they were doing and, and they have been doing it for 400 years straight of, of slavery, suffering, death. Uh, and the list goes on. And he was saying they're even doing it now. Uh, with prisons, uh, thug life, crack life, uh, health systems, um, and you know, and the music, et cetera, et cetera. Just everywhere you turn, entertainment, TV, they're enslaving us. Education, everywhere we we turn, um, and also he, he noted that they they have been taking all of these all of these things uh, that we've been helping them with, and they've been passing it down to their descendants and say, we should do the same. We should, we should pass things down to ours. And so stop worrying so much about them and start passing things on to our descendants. And he said, uh, he agreed, he definitely agrees with Deva on uh, taking our energy away from Gucci and Prada and directing it towards our own. We need to help support our own and uplift our own. And he also mentioned what Maya Angelou said. He said, man, when people show you who they are, believe them. And it, it just, it is what it is. Like, uh, okay, we, we see who you are now. So now we know how to move. Now we know how to operate. And 
and honestly, I guess just just for um, what they've been saying, both of them been saying, it's not like they're saying we know how to operate now. We we both we we all should have been knowing how to operate. It's just that 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 idea has been lost through the decades. That we 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 sh we we should always have been supporting each other. We should have always been helping each other. And uh, basically, that's what Mark Endeva has been saying. That's common theme throughout this entire debate. So everyone who's who's tuning in, if, if if you if you know who you want to vote for, whether that's the Va Emmanuel or whether that's Mark Muhammad Jr., go to vote.greatblackdebates.com. That's vote.greatblackdebates.com. These brothers came in and and dropped a wealth of knowledge. So everybody, give them a round of applause. I want to see the claps in the, in the comments section. They 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 did they did the thing they did the thing and I definitely learned a lot man it's a uh, it's every time I'm hosting this thing you you guys are coming in and and you're just dropping knowledge and I really appreciate that to be in, within this space with you all and uh, it's really an, an amazing thing so I, I appreciate uh, that you guys and uh, Devad did you want to uh, say anything before we head out today anything where people can reach you uh, where how they can work with you et cetera et cetera. Yeah, we have uh, regular workshops uh, with the Club of New Jerusalem. Uh, so we are having all day workshops this Sunday, this coming up Sunday this weekend. And if you want to RSVP, uh, my email is konuju, C O N U J U, 2019 at Gmail. And so just drop me your email and I'll put you on the email list. And then every time we have a workshop uh, with Building New Jerusalem, uh, we can get you on. And so that we can link all these uh, people together, these like-minded people together, like me and uh, Mr. Mark here. And so that we can make these things happen for us. Uh, this is not some type of fantasy uh, that we're trying to do reparations is a possibility all we need is just your focus efforts good good all right so uh mark mark muhammad jr do you have anything that you would like to say to the people around the world where they can find you how they can uh help support and in, in anything that you're doing whatever you like to say oh yes sir uh i want to just thank all the viewers for listening thank you as well um but like I said earlier, just for everybody just now tuning in, you can reach me on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, at Mark Muhammad Jr. or Brother Mark Muhammad Jr. Uh, I reply back to everybody, uh, except for those spam accounts. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, just reach me out there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Mark Muhammad Jr. Peace. All right, good, good. And and I'm your host, John F. Thomas. And so you can follow me on Facebook, YouTube, John F. Thomas. F is in Frank, John F. Thomas. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JT Slim Cutter. So J T S L I M C U T T A. J T S L I M C U T T A. There's already been people messaging me ever since I started hosting this thing and, and I'll respond back. So uh, <laughs> don't think I don't think that I won't. And uh, definitely, it's been a pleasure having you, too. I uh, definitely hope to see you guys again. For everyone who's tuned in, make sure you vote for who you like the best. They both did a great job, but only one can, can make it towards to the end. So we'll see who can make it on to the next round. Vote.greatblackdebates.com. Again, it's vote.greatblackdebates.com. And if you want to be a contestant on the show, go to greatblackdebates.com greatblackdebates.com and uh, i just looking forward to seeing what happens from this point on guys and hope you have a good rest of the night you too all right see you